Hello everyone, Pray Scooter here, and welcome to a new Let's Play. Dating back in time, 12 years, Lost Kingdoms on the Nintendo GameCube. Now this is a game that takes me back a while. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> after I'm done choking up Lem, this is a game that actually takes me back a while to... Actually, probably when I first started getting, actually started playing GameCube titles, this is probably one of the first titles I played. That was a GameCube title. Now, if that opening cutscene wasn't enough, it's basically a game about a mystical land where monsters come from cards. A very simple concept, but very much dick moves to get a hundred percent in the game. In fact. I don't think you can technically get 100% because there's one creature that you can't get. But, I'd, I'm spoiling a lot of the game way beforehand. Let us go ahead and dive into this new adventure. Now the protagonist's name is Katia. I'm going to leave it as such. I'm not going to change anything, so... And we're done here. <clears throat> The disappearance of a small force was the first sign of the approaching evil. One morning, villagers awoke to find a solid wall of fog where their force should have been. Some men, braver than others, ventured into the pitch black mist. They were never heard from again. The next day, the lake disappeared into swirling mist. It was not long before the impenetrable mist of shrouded the village itself for penetrating darkness. I can't read all that that fast. By ancient covenant, the rulers of the five kingdoms had banned all interaction between their nations. Now, if the five kingdoms banned them in their isolation and meant to look for solutions, sadly, they could no longer find a plan to beat the fog. Terrifying rumors spread throughout the land. Some whispered tales of an ageist evil reawakened. <clears throat> and suddenly, so loading screen. So, the loading screens in this game, they're a little lackluster, but pretty much everything else this game has to offer is fantastic, including in-game cutscenes of this caliber. Princess Katia, our worst fears have come true. And that is our protagonist. The black fog is at the gates of the castle. Katia, the black fog must be stopped. We will not be safe here. I would not I would not leave you here alone, but the king's first duty is to protect his people. In the castle if the castle is attacked, find the rune stones and flee. Guard it with your life, daughter. And that is the opening plot. We play as Princess Katia. And we can talk with people, even though talking was a little awkward. It laps against the very walls of the castle. We can, talk, we can talk with everyone, but I'm pretty sure all they're all going to freak out about is the fact that the Black Fog is at the castle gates. Anyway, <clears throat> we have an extremely simple first level. Oh, by the way, I should... Oh. Well, I didn't even, I didn't even recognize, <laughs> realize. It's been a while since I played this game, so you're going to forgive me. This is the map of Ogwil. The positions of each of the five kingdoms are laid out on the map. That we can't look at, so... Now this game... Very simple, control-wise, at least starting out here. Left stick to move, C stick to spin the camera 90 degrees. That's it. And I... Oh, I guess you could move the D-pad if you really want to. I didn't even know you could do that. Huh. Anyway. And it's A to talk to, talk to things and interact with people. But we are in danger, so we must acquire the rune stone and flee. But with this runestone comes something a little bit different. By the way, if you couldn't, if it hasn't already been apparent, this is basically our hair clip. <laughs> we cannot. We now have the power to fight the monsters that the black fog brings. How might you ask? Guardian of the sacred covenants, the powers of the cards flow in your blood. 
with these cards. Now, the cards, there's a lot to this, but I think first I gotta start off with is basic explanation of combat. Well, they're helping us with this right Basically, each of the cards you can use is assigned to a button on the controller. Y up, X right, B left, A down. So, we can use various control settings, but I'm going to run around here while I explain the basic cards we have. Now, the quality should be good enough where you can actually see this at least. Keep in mind it's a GameCube game, so it's not going to look the most crisp. But, our next card in our deck is on the left there. But of the cards we have, we have one summon. A summon basically roots you in place while you summon a monster to do a massive attack, but it has, but it has only one use. An attack card is a card that you that you will summon. It's a attack card that you basically use at like a melee attack. For example, and there's one other that we don't have yet, which is a placement card. Basically, you throw a monster out in the field and it acts on its own whim. So those are the three types of cards. There's much, it's a little, it's even more complicated than that when we get on, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, there's one more thing. Oh yes. Also note, note the, uh, well the sword icon is basically denotes what, if it's a basic attack card. And I'll show the icon for the action, for the final thing, but. In the upper left hand corner is our, basically all of our stats are gems, and our life total. Now how many gems it will cost to summon a monster will be just to the right of what kind of summon it is. So, for example, the wolf, the werewolf looking thing will cost five gems, whereas the all, all but our last attack card will be a once a one gem summon. So, let's just go ahead and kill him. Oh, he's not dead. Now, you can... Now, the gems up top there... I'm doing this just for an example's sake. I gotta leave myself... Actually, that's the last kind of card right there. Okay. Now, though it's ill-advised, you can still use the cards that, that cost more than the amount of gems you have. It will just hurt. It will just take away from your life total. I think, believe it's ten life points per crystal over what you have. Yep. So you must manage your, you must manage your crystals very wisely as well. You can't just attack willy nilly. So it is a little bit of a strategy game as well. Now I believe somewhere. And that's really the end of the mission. Well, it's mostly the end of the mission at that point. We're going to have... Or we're going to meet the old lady. Did you get the cards? Good. Let's be off. You're not exactly the most fearsome warrior in the kingdom. I don't suppose you have a br burly brother stashed away somewhere. So be it. Even the ugliest oyster may contain a beautiful pearl. Although you look more like the pearl than the oyster. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure she's at least an eight. Who am I, you ask? I'm the only person that can teach you how to use those cards you found in the treasury. You'd better come with me if you want to stay alive. Come now, my cute little guardian of the covenant. You just leave everything up to the old good. So we have met good. And here is a sort of rating system. Basically, forever, uh, however efficient you are is will basically give you a better rating. So, for instance, say a battlefield requires set... Let's just say... Let's just go by general game ruling. In general game ruling, we got a B rank here. There's five stars you can get total on a stage. I'm fairly certain that is. I I have not even play test this, so I don't even know what, to, what I'm looking at for half of this. I'm just here going off of the old memory banks. Anyway. So we got a B rank. So, like I said, it will base it on your efficiency. So, say I say I defeated the monsters of this area, but I only used one card. I would definitely get a 5-star rating. 
Other levels will take a lot longer to beat, and you will need to use a lot more cards to beat it. So, like I said, efficiency is what you're ranked on. So avoiding battles does help to getting your efficiency up, if it's possible. Though, we'll talk more about how battles work in a little bit. So I got a four-star ranking. I think five is the most. Yep, that's right. So I can choose two cards from this. If I had gotten five stars, I could, have cho I could have chosen three cards. Now what are these, you might ask? These are additional monsters you can add into your deck. Mmm, I didn't get the skeleton. That's the rare one. Now each level will have a rare monster. This, or the boss, I should say. The skeletons in this level were the boss. And you can basically learn more about everything like this. Like, it's got a little bit lore behind it. The proud half-bird half -bird is a spear, but a man will maneuver into position. So yes, you can learn everything you wish to know about this kind, this kind of card. Through and through, if you really want to know. Even lore. Next is another Birdman. And congratulations, that is the first level of the game. <laughs> Princess Katya of Al Alange, oh my god, these names, like in Lord of the Rings, <laughs> has defeated the monsters that threatened the castle. Her victory provides little relief, despite all attempts to stem the tide of mist. Moyers fall victim to the black fog each day. No one knows where it comes from, or why it has appeared. Unless the secret of the Black Fog is unlocked, the entire world will fall into darkness. Entrusting the defense of the castle to her knights, the princess sets forth in a quest to save the world. Her only companion on the journey is the mysterious old crone Gerd. Are you cunning old? And now we get to talk about car deck mechanics here. Once you use a card, you cannot use it again, so you must select the cards in your deck carefully. Only, yes, only the cards in your deck can be used in the mission. So basically, between missions, it is highly advised that you go and edit your deck. Like so. So, oh man. So our deck is pretty small, it only consists of 12 cards at the moment. But we can, we can bolster that with other cards. So I've added two more Birdman into my deck at this point. I have a summon heavy deck. <laughs> and if you want to know more about the card, simply press Y and you'll be know what it'll do. So it, it heals. We have a healing card here. Now there's are very there are two different types of healing. So the two, the two types of healing, basically health healing and deck healing. So there are cards in the game that will basically, in terms of card draw, will take the cards in your deck, shuffle it back into your library, and let you use the cards again. But those don't come for a while yet. And I think that will do it. Now you have you can always make a new deck. You can you can basically make up to six different decks. We have nowhere near the amount of cards to do that. But you can make countless amounts of decks to mess around with, try different things, have it based on a certain element, whatever you want to do. It's it's a you're basically building a card to face somebody else somebody else in a trading card game with. Or the world in this case. Now, the big thing that's an issue now, the big thing that I have kind of an issue with is actually the saving system. When I grew up, saving was awkward because you had to actually go in. You actually had to go into system, something that was foreign to me. So for the longest time, I didn't think I could save my game for whatever reason. I'm a, I've already stated before, I was a dumb teenager and or kid. Also, our overall defenses and resistances are listed to the right there. Pretty much everything you could want to know is listed there or here. 
But even though it was kind of short, I think we'll call it there for our first episode. I just crammed a whole buttload of knowledge into your head for this game. But believe me, you will enjoy it when we get to the end of it. And I'm going to force you to enjoy it. Don't look at me. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.